Playwrights Local and Radio on the Lake Theater present Things Needing Explanation. Written by Julia Fisher, directed by Anne McAvoy. Featuring Dominique L. Gardner, Nadia Salette, Lisa L. Wiley, and Amy Schwabauer. If you are listening to this production in a car, please note that our story also takes place in a car and includes sounds of honking, traffic, and tires screeching. Our story also includes some language and themes that may not be appropriate for children. stretching to Dead Man's Curve. Today's traffic report has been brought to you by Chicken and Waffles, Cleveland's hottest new addition to the flats, a restaurant featuring over 40 variations on, you guessed it, chicken and waffles. Ooh, Grandma Jay, we should try that. Oh. The time is now 6 p.m. You're listening to your number one destination for songs and stories from your past. FM 92.1 WJCB Cleveland. In just a moment, we will return with the 1948 real-life mystery, A Little Too Lake, featuring John Ellert of the Evansville, Indiana Press. Yes. Made it in time for Old People Radio Hour. Watch who you're calling old. I say it with the deepest admiration and respect. I love old people. Old people are so much better than teenagers. Are we? You are. We return now with a chilling tale of murder, wrongful sentencing, and a fresh new lead after seven years. Hey, I want to talk to you. But old people mystery radio hour is our tradition. How dare you interfere with our tradition? Well, you can turn it back on. I have an idea. Is it better than old timey murder? Maybe. I think it might be time to resurrect things needing explanation. Oh my god. I forgot about that game. Georgia. Sorry. Gosh. Man, it's been years since we played that. How did that even start? It was something with Agatha Christie, right? Yes. I had just given you my copy of Murder on the Orient Express. Express. Yes, I remember. And in the middle of the book, Inspector Pearl was stumped. So he made this list entitled it Things Needing Explanation and wrote down everything he didn't understand about the case. And you wanted to be just like him. The queer female version, anyway. So you asked us to create fake crime scenes for you to solve. And I'd write Things Needing Explanation on the top of the sheet of the paper and write down all my notes. I still have some of those sheets in my memory box. (laughs) There must be like hundreds. I think I made you play with me every single time I came over. Why did you let me bully you into that? Mom and Dad and Hattie gave up on me after, like, one game. Well, I love doing those with you. Plus, I felt responsible for getting you into mysteries in the first place. Did my parents ever get mad that you introduced me to murder mysteries when I was so young? It was pretty clear early on that you were going to do and read whatever you wanted, no matter what they said. Fair enough. I think my favorite was still when you pretended to steal my necklace. (laughs) Oh, yes, I took that plot from Nancy Drew. You copied from books? I had to. I read just about every mystery on the shelves of the library just to keep up with you. What about the one with the syringe in the air bubble? Ah, that one was Blanche White. I loved Blanche White. No wonder so many of those books felt oddly familiar. Well, you were hard to stump. You were quite a clever little girl. And now I'm... Stop fishing. (laughs) Why'd you bring that up? I was thinking we could play it again. If you're going to be applying to criminology programs soon, you have to sharpen your detective skills. Are you saying they're not already... They can always be sharper. But we're... driving. I'll make it up out loud. Okay, if you really want to. So, you're the detective. You are notified that an ambulance responded to a 911 call and a young boy was DOA, which means... Dead on arrival. I taught you that. I was going to say... Which means you need to investigate the scene before the body can be taken away. Mm -hmm. You ring the doorbell. A man opens the door. He's sobbing. The body of a young boy, his nephew, is laying on the floor. 
He tells you through his tears that his nephew is allergic to shellfish, and he hadn't realized that the Caesar salad dressing contains anchovies. Which aren't technically shellfish, but most people with shellfish allergies are allergic to anchovies too. Checks out. How old is the kid? Six. My first question is, how did he get a six-year-old to eat a salad? He tells you he wouldn't let the kid eat ice cream until he ate his whole dinner. Okay. Is the medical examiner here? She comes in right behind you. After examining the body, she says that the boy experienced laryngospasm. The throat, throat closed up from the allergic reaction. Right. So he would have died really quickly. Uh, EpiPen? The uncle used it, but it didn't save him. Hmm. Huh. Does that happen often? Yeah, sometimes. Could be incorrect dosage, incorrect usage. Expired. Is anyone else at the house? Nope. Just the uh, uncle and nephew. This is the uncle's house? Yes. Why was the kid there? Well, um, the uncle was babysitting. The kid's mom and dad were going to see a show. Mm. What show? Mousetrap. Why? Just seeing how fast you can make shit up. Georgia, stuff. Make stuff up. Sorry, I'm going. So, what's your verdict? Well, it seems like a straightforward case. But since we're playing things needing explanation, it's obviously not. Unless you're trying to trick me. Are you trying to trick me? I don't think you're trying to trick me. Mm. I order an autopsy with special attention paid to the contents of the stomach. Autopsy comes back. Cause of death was indeed laryngospasm, brought on by an allergic reaction consistent with the child's recorded reactions to shellfish. Mm. Any other allergies? Not documented. He went through a pretty rigorous testing when they discovered the shellfish allergy. Okay, stomach contents. Unidentifiable. Even under a microscope? Correct. Oh, that's interesting. How much of the salad did the kid eat before he had a reaction? At least a few bites. Or so the uncle says. Plants and vegetables don't break down easily in the stomach, so remnants of the lettuce should have still been identifiable under a microscope. Or even visually since he died right after eating. And little kids don't usually chew all that well. So... No traces of lettuce. No trace of lettuce. Hmm. Is that only true for plants and vegetables? That they'd be identifiable in an autopsy? Yeah, anything with a cell wall. Don't you remember helping me study for that biology test? Someone has a good memory. For biology, at least. Okay, now I'm super suspicious of this uncle. How long was the kid with him? An hour or two. Where was he before? The boy's home. Call from Neely, a.k.a. My Favorite Daughter. Pink heart emoji. Pink heart emoji. I can't believe you never changed that back. Or that you let my mother alone with your phone in the first place. Hey, hon. Hey, ma. Hi, mom. How was day one of the conference? Ugh, still going. We just took a five and I wanted to check in. Is Georgia with you? Yep. Just picked her up a few minutes ago. She's got her headphones in. No, I don't. Can she hear us? I don't think so. Uh, her music's up pretty loud. Good. How's she seem? Um, she seems fine. A little quiet, maybe. Why? Uh, she and Hattie got into a fight. They were supposed to have a movie night tonight, just the two of them, while Lewis and I are out of town. Georgia was really excited about it, I think. But Hattie got invited to some party and decided to go to that instead. Oh. And poor Georgia wasn't invited to the party, Ugh, which I think made it worse. They don't even have the same friends anymore. It breaks my heart. Well, they're twins, huh? Not clones. I know, I know, but I can't stand when they aren't speaking to each other. I'm sure it will pass soon. Yeah, you're right. Thanks again for taking her for the weekend last minute like this. I'm sure it'll cheer her up. She loves hanging out with you. Oh, well, the feeling is mutual. Well... Give Georgia our love, and we'll see you both when we get back Sunday night. Though, you might hear from Lewis before then. Man's watched eight hours of Fixer Upper already. <laughs> I warned him that I wouldn't have time to hang out with him, what, with all the hobnobbing with the future neurologists of America. 
But he still insisted he wanted to come. Well, he's very welcome to call whenever he gets bored. Thanks. Just be prepared to talk about crown molding when he does. If he wants to come install some for me, he can talk all he wants. <laughs> I'll see you soon, Mom. Enjoy the schmoozing. I'll try. Poor Georgia. My ass. Georgia. I'm sorry, but I don't need pity from my own mom. I'm fine. It's not a big deal. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah. We fight all the time. It's nothing. Why did you tell my mom I had headphones in? Oh, I knew she'd want to grill you about what you learned in school today and all that. I figured I'd spare you. Huh? Very considerate, Grams. Back to the case, Madam Detective. Right. What's the verdict on time of death? Within the hour that you showed up, more or less. Interesting. Do they usually get more specific than that? I don't think so. All the indicators are so variable. I don't think they could tell by the minute. Who's that? How should I know? I'm being a good, attentive granddaughter and not looking at my phone. Oh, sorry. I'll turn the sound off. Wait, where's my phone? Oh, here it is. I'll grab it. It's a red light. Oh, who's Kate? <laughs> no one. These messages don't look like they're from no one. Is she a new girlfriend? Uh, they are my friend. Remember, I told you about them from mock trial. Oh, right. I remember you thought they were very cute. Why do I ever tell you anything? Do we need to respond to Kate? Green light, Grams. Sorry! Sorry! Okay, so you said the kid was at his own house earlier, right? Right. The uncle picked him up there and drove the boy back to his place. I want to go to the kid's house. Look around. Okay. It's a small house, so it doesn't take you long to look around. Kitchen is spotless. Fridge is full of food. The kid's mom is a caterer and has been preparing trays for an event the next day. Kid's room has toys everywhere. Dolls, train tracks, stuffed animals, little bookshelf full of books. Nothing seems out of the ordinary or out of place. Hmm. Do any of the catering orders have fish in them? There are a few trays of fish sticks. Well, there you go. Wow, that's some great parenting right there. Well, she's a caterer. It was her job. Her job was to keep her kid alive. Was the fish breaded? Yes. Why? If the kid thought they were, I don't know, chicken nuggets or something, he might have eaten one when no one was paying attention and died here in his home. Or if it was a murder, someone could have told him it was a chicken nugget. How'd you guess there'd be fish in the fridge? We know it was a food allergy because of the laryngospasm, but it doesn't seem to be the salad. So I'm looking for any other source of shellfish. And what if it hadn't been a salad? What if the uncle would have just said that it was something else, something not a vegetable? Would you still have suspected this? I don't know. That's not the game, Grams. Sorry, you're right. Keep going. I'm going the speed limit. Give an old woman a break! <sighs> did you just flip that person off? I did no such thing. Yes, you did. You flipped them off. Georgia. <clears throat> this is the greatest day of my life. Oh. E you okay? Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm fine. How many fish sticks are there? What? Fish sticks in the fridge. Oh, um, I don't know. A lot? Are these handmade or frozen from a box? Homemade. She's a caterer, remember? Why is a caterer making breaded fish sticks? It's a kid's birthday party. But... A rich kid's birthday party. Okay. That makes sense. Can we look at her catering receipt? Sure. Okay. Under fish sticks, does it have a specific number? It says a hundred. How many fish sticks are in the fridge? Ninety-nine. Aha! So the kid did eat one. Or the mom dropped one, or didn't make the right number. Yeah, right. She's a caterer. They're like, all about precision. I hadn't thought about counting how many there were. 
That's clever. That's good. Now we just need to know, did the kid sneak one on his own? Or was this a murder? I want to question that uncle. Did he have any motive for getting rid of the kid? Not that you can find. You question him for hours and find nothing besides that he really, really loved his nephew. He's racked with guilt. Hmm. What about the parents? No motive for them either. Any other family member? Uh, not that live in the area. If they really have no motive, and I'm convinced of that. Am I convinced of that? Yes. Okay. Then the kid must have snuck one on accident and died. With a laryngospasm, it'd be pretty immediate. How far away is the uncle's house? 20, 30 minutes. I can't imagine a kid just like holding on to a singular fish stick for that long. So it had to have happened at the kid's house. But why not call the police from there? Why take him back to the uncle's house? That's a good question. Oh, oh shit, Georgia. Shit, the mom. The kid must have died at his house while the uncle was like in the bathroom or something. And then he used the EpiPen, but it was too late. And the uncle realized that if he called the police right away, the mom would find out that he died because she had fish in the fridge. And she would blame herself. He did it to save the kid's mom. So she'd be able to blame him for her son's death instead of herself. I'm right, right? I'm totally right. That was significantly faster than I expected. Thank you. So, what'd you think? That was pretty tricky, Grams. I'm impressed. It's a stupid crime, though. He should have just kept the kid where he was and called an ambulance. Even if it was clearly too late? Yeah. I mean, I doubt they'd be facing criminal prosecution since it wasn't on purpose. Minor charges of negligence, maybe. And saving the mom's feelings is a stupid reason to go through all of that. It's her fault, anyway. Was it just the lettuce? Huh? You wouldn't have figured it out if it hadn't been the lettuce? If the uncle had served the kid something that wasn't a plant, you wouldn't have suspected anything? I don't know. Maybe. Why? Was there anything else suspicious? You mean besides the murderous radish? This isn't funny, Georgia. <laughs> what? What's your problem? I need you to take this serious- Look out! <laughs> What's the matter? You almost got us killed. I'm sorry. Why don't you let me drive? No. Why not? I've got my license with me, and you're clearly not having the best driving. No! Day. Okay. I was just trying to help. I just need a minute. On the side of the road? What's the matter, Grandma? Call from Hattie. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, Grams. Did you pick up Georgia yet? Uh, yes, she's here with me. Why? Did she get the present I left her? Present? I got a present? I'm not sure, honey. She has her headphones in right now. What was it? Well, I was helping run the National Honor Society book sale at lunch today, and I found this huge collection of female detective fiction. And Georgia's been kind of mad at me, so I bought it for her, and I left it on her bed as a peace offering. And then I texted her to say I left her a surprise at home, but she hasn't responded. And I'm scared she's still mad at me. Oh, Hattie. What a sweet gift. I know she'll love it. So she hasn't said anything about it? I left it on her bed when I ran home to grab my volleyball bag. I figured she might want to read it this weekend while she's with you. I'm not sure if she saw it, but I'll certainly let her know. And maybe we'll swing by the house later to pick it up. Thank you. And what are you up to this weekend? Well, Alan's having a birthday party tonight and he invited me. Oh. You know how long I've had a crush on him, Grams? He invited me specifically. I still have to figure out what to get him as a present, but today in foods, we made these chocolate chip cookies and I used this weird bougie recipe with almond flour and peanut flour and coconut flour because Alan's gluten free. So I'm going to bring those to the party. I really hope he likes them. Were those the cookies on the counter? Oh, I am so sorry, hon, but I ate one when I picked Georgia up. They looked so yummy. Shit, I left them at home? 
I thought I put them in the back of my car. Georgia didn't eat any, right? Oh, of course not. Oh, good. I can't believe I did that. I was just in such a rush to get back for volleyball and... It's all right, sweetie. Georgia's fine. Well, did they at least taste good? They were delicious. Good. Oh, I gotta go. Coach is calling us back. Love you, honey. Love you. <sighs> Grandma? What's going on? Your sister got you a present. Isn't that nice? That's not what I mean. Why didn't you just ask me if I had seen the book? Why do you keep telling people I have my headphones in? I, I didn't want you to um, put you on the spot. And why the hell did you eat one of Hattie's cookies? You know better than to touch anything she makes. I'm sure they were in neat little rolls all wrapped up in pink saran wrap or something. Oh, you know, I just, um... She definitely would have known if there was one missing. She would have known if there was one missing. Why did you tell me that story about the little boy? I just... Don't play with me, Grandma. What's the point of that story? And why can't I remember any of this? You eating the cookie or picking me up? I barely remember getting home from school. <sighs> Shit, it's getting really hot. I gotta roll down the window. Why can't I move? Why can't I move? I'm... So, so sorry, Georgia. For what? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Am I? No, 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 no. It can't possibly be. Am I... dead? Yes. Holy shit. Holy shit. I... I... I need a second. Fuck, I can't roll down the window. How did I not realize I can't move? I'll do it. <sighs> okay. Okay. I'm dead? I'm... dead. A lifetime of carrying my fucking EpiPen everywhere and it doesn't even save me. I did use it, right? Yes. I, I don't know why it wasn't enough. Where was my phone? On the charger upstairs. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Georgia. I'm dead. I get to swear now. No, that's not. I didn't. <sighs> oh, fuck. <sighs> it's okay. It's okay. No, it's not okay. I'm dead. This is the definition of not okay. What's even happening? Am I a ghost? A, a spirit? I don't know. What am I? I don't know. I just started hearing your voice. I assumed I was cracking up. I can't believe I'm dead. I can't believe Hattie killed me. She didn't mean it. If she wasn't so enamored with her stupid gluten-free boyfriend. It was a mistake. Why are you taking the fall for her? Are you really okay with my whole family hating you for the rest of your life? The rest of my life isn't as long as Hattie's. Oh, stop it. You're what, 65? You have decades left. You want to spend your golden years with everyone you love blaming you for killing me? I'll know the truth. This is some self-sacrificial bullshit. You don't have to martyr yourself for Hattie. It was my fault just as much as hers. What? How? I was late to pick you up. So? If I wasn't late, if I hadn't had to finish the chapter of my stupid book, maybe I would have gotten there on time. Maybe I could have saved you. That's still not the same as leaving out cookies with fucking peanut flour. Your parents got rid of the house phone. If that were still there, maybe you would have been able to call 911. What are you saying? None of us are innocent, Georgia. And unless I take all the blame... Each one of us is going to twist ourselves into impossible knots of guilt and shame for the rest of our lives. It'll ruin us. Okay. But why did I even eat Hattie's cookies anyway? It's not like I normally eat random baked goods without knowing exactly what's inside. Have you not figured that out yet? It was her text. 
She told you she had a peace offering. She meant the book. But I thought she meant the cookies. Yes. Oh. All right. Yeah. Yeah. She really would never forgive herself. So what do we do now? You want to help? I guess. What else have I been training my whole life for? Oh. Oh, Grandma. I'm never gonna become a detective. Georgia. No. No. It's okay. This is my last chance. If my last mission on Earth is to save Hattie from a lifetime of guilt, then let's do this. You don't have to. We have to move. The longer we sit on the side of the road, the more suspicious we become. If this is gonna work, we can't waste any more time. Get back on the road. Okay, catch me up to speed. What did you do at the house? When you weren't answering your phone, I pulled into the garage and came in through the side door. I found you. We'll skip over that part. I ate the rest of the cookie you didn't finish and carefully rewrapped the plate, which, you were right, was beautifully arranged. Of course. Then I carried your stuff and you out to the car and propped you up so it looked like you were asleep. Okay. Okay, good. Were any of the neighbors out when you got to my house? No, and I closed the garage door before I brought you out. Good. So what's the plan now? We need to make it look like you ate something at my house with peanuts. Do you have anything at the house with peanuts? Of course not, for this exact reason. Right. Well, I guess we'll have to stop and grab something. Something that doesn't seem like it would have peanuts in it. I'll drop you off first and then run to the store. Lord almighty, the gas tank is almost empty! <sighs> it's okay. There's a gas station right there. We can just stop there. I meant to fill up the tank on my way over, but I was already late. It's okay. If I hadn't... If I hadn't been late... It's not your fault, Grandma. Are you really doing this for Hattie? Or are you doing this because you blame yourself? I don't know. <sighs> All right. Don't go anywhere. I couldn't even if I tried. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> Go, Grandma. Tonight's weather forecast... Jeez Louise! Stupid things! Partly cloudy skies become cloudier with a chance of thunderstorm to 90%. Low 56 degrees. Wind southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thunderstorms, great. Next up, is your lawn fertilizer secretly killing you? Stay tuned. Good evening. Hello. Let me know if you need help finding anything. Thank you. Okay, soft. Not plant-based. Not obviously containing peanuts. Perfect. Okay. Is this all I need? I think so. <laughs> Pull yourself together, woman. You are not done yet. All right, let's get this over with. Is that all for you, ma'am? Yes, thank you. 477. I'm so sorry, but I have to tell you that you're not supposed to leave your car unattended when it's filling up. Oh. I wouldn't normally say anything, but our manager has been all up on us to watch for it. Apparently, the auto shutoff didn't work for someone, like a month ago and gallons of gas got spilled on the ground while they were in the bathroom. Crazy.
how fast things can happen, huh? Yeah, right. Um, thanks for the warning. But actually, my granddaughter is in the car. She's keeping an eye on it. Oh, good. Although it looks like from here she fell asleep. Poor girl's had a rough day. High school, am I right? Uh, you're telling me. Only a few months left. Well, congratulations. Receipt? Sure. Have a nice day. Thanks, you too. Everything go okay? Yeah. What'd you get? Aw, pudding mix. I'm gonna be killed by my own comfort food. I grabbed a few chocolate and one chocolate peanut butter. They were right next to each other, so I can say that this box was misshelved. And if anyone tracks the purchase and wonders why I had to buy pudding on the way home, I can say it was to cheer you up. From my fight with Hattie. Smart. But why wouldn't you look at the ingredients list? You always look at the ingredients list before you give me anything. Maybe because I'm old and senile. I forgot. No one's gonna believe that. The police certainly will. Not after you just had that conversation with Hattie. And Mom and Dad. Honey, your mother grew up watching both of my parents slowly forget who she was. She's been watching for signs of dementia in me since she was 12. She'll believe it. But Hattie and my dad. I'll just have to convince them. You're my phone. phone! It'll be super suspicious if I haven't responded to anything recently. Plus, if I send messages closer to the time of you calling 911, it'll seem more believable. Who's messaged me in the last hour? I'm so sorry. I need your fingerprint to unlock. This is very weird, Grandma. Shh. So, who's messaged me? You kids with your apps, how many different ways do you need to send messages to each other? They all have different functions. Uh-huh. Okay, you have this message from Hattie about the peace offering, and then a few messages from Kate. Respond to Hattie. Um, I didn't see it when I got home, but Grandma Jay told me, well, you got me. That's the coolest. And... You're the coolest. Can't wait to read it. Love you. No comma there. Come on. You know my text style. You gotta match it. Sorry for being proper. Grammar and language is all made up, and people who are all anal about it are usually just enforcing some kind of colonial patriarchal nonsense. They really are teaching you stuff in high school, huh? Uh, what did Kate say? They said... Hey, the gang is... Talking about seeing a movie tomorrow. Wanna come? And then, never mind, they all just backed out. And then, actually, I really just wanted to ask you anyway. Wanna see a movie with me? And then a while later, OMG, did I ruin things? I'm so sorry. If you don't wanna go, please just pretend like this never happened. <sighs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Tell them I'd love to. And then a smiley face. Just a colon in parentheses. Not an emoji. Not a winky face, Grandma. Sorry, sorry. <sighs> That's it. Okay, let's get out of this gas station. We've been here too long already. Don't worry, I checked the camera placement and we're barely visible here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a little too good at this, Grandma. Now we just need to make it home. Then what? I'll make the pudding on the stove and serve it to you so you wouldn't have had a chance to read the label. What about my EpiPen? I brought it with us. I'll drop it on the ground next to you like you used it. Then call 911. Okay, good. Are we missing anything? I don't think so. Can you think of anything else? No. If we do this right, no one will suspect a thing. And they can all blame you. And they can all blame me.
I'm so sorry, Grandma. I can handle it. And you're... You're really sure about all this? I'm sure. I'm really gonna miss you, Georgia. I know. I... Hey, let's listen to the end of Old People Radio Time. Anything for you. Our weary reporter turned detective knew there was only one thing left to do. If he could just hold strong and keep his wits about him, he might just be able to do it. He might just be able to save everyone. You've been listening to Things Needing Explanation by Julia Fisher, directed by Anne McAvoy, featuring Dominique L. Gardner, Nadia Salette, Lisa L. Wiley, and Amy Schwabauer, with sound design and editing by John Watts. Things Needing Explanation was produced by Playwrights Local of Cleveland, Ohio, in partnership with Radio on the Lake Theater, Shaker Heights, Ohio. For more information, visit playwrightslocal.org. This recording is copyrighted 2021 by Playwrights Local. Things Needing Explanation is copyrighted 2021 by Julia Fisher.